About a year and a half ago, I made a short film that required me to get some actors for the film, exactly four actors, and that made me have to step out of my comfort zone and go through the process of learning how to cast for a movie. And so now that I've been through the process and I've figured out how it works, at least how it works for me, I figured I'd hop on here, make a video, and explain it to anybody else who cares to find out. I was extremely hesitant to go through this process. It was out of my comfort zone. I didn't really want to do it. So I started out by sifting through my personal network of actors and friends that I know that can act to see if any of them would possibly fit the role or if they knew anybody that would fit the role. And after I did a little bit of digging, I discovered that I would in fact, have to step out of my comfort zone and learn the casting process. And I'd never really done it before. I had done a little bit of it on my short film that I made for Hooked a while back, but I wasn't part of the entire casting process. I just kind of picked the actress in the end. It really wasn't that involved. So this time I had to do a lot more on my own and figure out the different steps. So per the recommendation of some acting friends, I went to actorsaccess.com to try and find some actors for my short film. And I quickly discovered that Actors Access was not where I needed to be. I needed to be on a different website called Breakdown Express. But Breakdown Express is part of Actors Access, but it's the part of Actors Access that the people that cast are on. The actors are on Actors Access, the people that are casting actors are on Breakdown Express. So after that, confusion. I found myself on Breakdown Express and to be honest, both websites don't look like they've been updated since about 2005, but they both work really well. And one funny thing is that in order for you to actually activate your Breakdown Express account, they set an appointment with you. Someone has to physically call you to give you like a 10 minute tutorial on how to use their site. And then after that, they allow you to activate your account. The tutorial wasn't because I couldn't figure it out. It's just one of their requirements. And so it felt like a bigger process than it was, but after the call, it was pretty simple. And after that, I was able to send out my first breakdown. Casting actors now is much more accessible and easy to do than it was even 10 years ago. Every single thing for me was done online and I didn't even meet any of the actors until I was on set with them the day that we were shooting. And since we're talking about acting, I decided to call up the main two actors from this short film to ask them their thoughts on some of these topics. What is it like auditioning for projects these days? Nowadays, it's pretty much all self-tape. Um, you know, occasionally you'll do like a Zoom audition, uh, but it is very rare to go into the room these days. It's all, you shoot it yourself, you send it in, and you will most likely never hear back anything <laughs> you know you can have your coffee sitting off to the side you can you can stop a take and do it six thousand times until you feel good about it and then you can send it in to the producers and the casting directors it's nice it's nice and it cuts down on time in the car with me panicking about whether i've made the right choices in the scene while i was crafting the breakdown for my project i wanted to remove all barriers of entry for any actors reading the breakdown which essentially means that if an actor is reading my breakdown i want them to be confident that I know what I'm talking about, and I want them to feel like I'm confident that the project is gonna turn out well in the end. What in an email that Actors Access will send you will make you stop and and say like, oh, I gotta, I gotta try this one? A thoughtful character description. If I see a rule that says, uh, man, 25 to 35, red hair, I'm bored. I, I'm probably not gonna submit for that because I feel like the director doesn't care about the character, so I'm probably not going to care about them either. But if I see something that has some character traits that, that references how this character interacts with the people or what their journey is or, or goes into some depth about who this person is that I'm auditioning for, then I'm going to click on the breakdown. There's very few things I won't do right now. Like, I'm just at that stage in my career where, like, I just want to act as much as I possibly can. But what will make me skip over something, you know, if I, let's say, I happen to submit for something, then I do get the audition. I'll, if I'm, again, if I'm like stretched for time, I'll look at, okay, like, what is this project for? Like, is it, is this, is this thing paid? Is this a student film? Okay. If it's a student film, what school? One of the first things I look for is grammatical errors. And I used to give a lot more benefit of the doubt on that. But nowadays, if I see a breakdown that has a bunch of grammatical errors in it, I know pretty quickly that's not going to be a production I want to work on. 
it just tells me that they're not putting the time or the effort into any level of the production. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll shy away from those pretty quickly. Proofread your stuff, be professional, make sure that when an actor reads your breakdown, they feel excited to be part of your project and like it's going to be good. Being an actor requires people to put their trust into random directors sometimes. It requires them to show up on set to where they don't know what the outcome is gonna be. It requires them to plaster their face onto a big old screen for everyone to see them act really vulnerable. It can be really scary and people aren't gonna take a risk on a project that from the get-go does not seem like it has its act together. I mean, just walking, hopefully, onto a set where you're barely getting paid and it's a one-day shoot, just like, what the heck is gonna happen today? So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, always. Yeah, you roll up and you're like, well, here we go. <laughs> Diving in both feet, find out what happens. You show up and you start doing triage of like, <laughs> what am I in for today? Is this, is this gonna be wild fun or is this gonna be a wild mess? That's, that's the thing, like, it's in regards to like hoping it's gonna be good or not, you just, you just never know. I mean, some stuff you'll be like, oh this is gonna be really good like i can like oh yeah. man like i was, was really dropped in on this shoot and then you see the footage is like Meh, like Meh. <laughs> <laughs> like if i get overloaded with auditions and especially if it's stuff of like small projects that i don't know the people or anything i'll look up the the director or the writer whoever and look at their stuff to see like hmm, like is this something I could see myself doing and i remember looking you up and you had some stuff i was like oh i feel good about this guy when i saw you with your paperwork and i think i like sidled over with my cup of coffee and peered, peered over your shoulder and saw the full like it, it's such a simple thing but seeing that you had a full shot breakdown and storyboards like i felt like i internally wiped some sweat off my brow plenty of actors are hit with tons of projects every week that they could potentially be a part of I wanted to make sure that my breakdown would stand out from the rest and hopefully attract the attention of some very talented people. So here is a sample of what my initial casting post looked like. If you wanna take a closer look at it, feel free to pause the video. I'm not sure what breakdowns usually look like, but I felt like mine covered most of the questions any actor might have. And also this project was non-union. So if you're looking for information on a union acting, casting situation, I have no idea. But I remember looking at your breakdown, both the characters who, who headlined that strip were so fun and so interesting and had such a, well, I don't know that I realized how clear the relationship was when I saw the breakdown, but I remember thinking that their character was integral to the plot. I'm reading the breakdown and then the audition came through. I was like, oh, I, 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 I know what this is. I, I picked it up and I felt really good about just my own, just my own intuition regarding how to tackle it. And so I just kind of trusted that and uh, let it rip. So I took this breakdown that I had and I posted it into the void of actors access and I had no idea what to expect. I'd never done this before. And I waited, I just waited to see if people would start submitting themselves to be interested in the project. And I didn't really have to wait long. Within a few hours, the submissions were trickling in. And before I knew it, it had gotten up to almost 2,000 people total that submitted themselves. I live near LA, so this probably won't happen everywhere. I don't know how Actors Access works in other states or other areas, but near LA, there was no shortage of actors interested in my low budget short horror film that was only five minutes and non-union. So, you know. That should be some kind of encouragement to people out there. There are actors out there that are hungry for projects to work on. And if yours looks like it presents itself well, you probably won't have any trouble being cast. On this project, I paid people, I paid all the actors. It wasn't a lot, but I just wanted to give them a little something to make sure that they knew that I valued their time, their talent, and to make the whole set and production feel a little bit more official than maybe it would if I didn't pay people. I know some people just getting started in their filmmaking journey might not be able to pay people, but I still think you will be able to find success casting your short film. It really just depends on the actor if they want to work for, you know, physical money or if they want to work for connections and practice and a final product that they can add to their reel. All these things totally work. It's just a preference kind of thing. So the next part of this video is actually going to serve two purposes. The first, will be to explain a little bit of the insight on how I actually sifted through 
almost 2,000 submissions to only pick four people. And the second is going to be maybe a little bit of advice for actors out there that are setting up their online profiles uh, from the point of view of a guy that's gone through a ton of them to find only four people. What I like, what I don't like, that kind of thing. When I'm looking at all these submissions, the first thing I see is everybody's headshot, everybody's picture right next to each other. And if I see this guy's got a professional looking headshot, it's clean, it's sharp, and over here we got kind of a fuzzy iPhone 4S selfie. I gotta go with the professional looking headshot. I'm sorry, I know maybe people don't have the money or the ability to get a nice looking headshot, but it's kind of a requirement. It's just kind of an investment I think you might have to make to hopefully one day recoup that investment through your acting career. So if you want to be seen and taken seriously when you're submitting yourself, have a decent headshot. The next thing that I look for is a reel. And a reel is just a series of clips. It's a video with different examples of your acting in it. And straight up, if you don't have a reel, you are completely out of consideration. I've got 2,000 people to go through. I'm not gonna take the time to dig deep and find out if you can actually act if you haven't already presented me with an example. If you need a reel and you don't have one, I recommend anything. You can upload self-tapes, you can upload yourself doing a monologue in your room. I don't care about the quality at this point, I just wanna see if you can act. Figure out a way to get some examples of yourself acting or I will not consider you, and I don't think many other people will either. And then the last thing that I look for, and something that I learned to like a lot, was a slate shot. Slate shot is something that is on Actors Access. I don't know if other casting websites have this, but it was like a six to 12 second video that I could click on instantly on anybody's profile, and it would pop up a little video of the actor saying, hey, my name is so-and-so, and I'm from here. And it was really great to instantly be able to see what the actors look like on camera, how they sound, and it saved me a lot of time. But another thing is that Actors Access kind of pushed all the people with the slate shot to the top of the list. It was like people with a slate shot, and then people without a slate shot, but still a reel, and then people without a reel. If you want to be at the top of the list, I guess get a slate shot. But in the end, as an actor, that's really all you can do. You just gotta submit yourself and try your best and keep doing that over and over again until you get cast on a perfect project for you because I actually went through a lot of submissions. I saw a lot of super talented people, a lot of people I wish I could have said yes to, but I can really only pick one in the end and I gotta pick the one that's best for the project even though I wanted to say yes to everybody. So actors out there, you just gotta keep, you just gotta keep trying until you find the perfect project for you. But back to casting, after going through all the submissions um, for at least the main two actors in the short, I narrowed it down to about eight or nine for each and I sent out a request for a self-tape. And so in this situation, I send them sides. And sides, in this case, are just a chunk of the script for them to perform on camera for their self-tape to send back to me. And so here's kind of what the sides look like. It's just a, just a piece of the script with part of it X'd out. That part's just kind of action. I didn't feel like they needed to perform it on camera. And so they performed this and they sent back some self-tapes and it worked out great. What advice would you have for other actors out there when it comes to self-tapes? What advice do I feel that I'm qualified to give to any other actor? Yeah. Ooh. Have a backdrop, have lighting, have a good reader, know your lines, like prepare. Uh, yeah, I mean, for, for, for self-tapes, yeah, just like, I mean, do a lot of them. Do some really shitty ones, that way you get better. Like I look back <laughs> at some of the like, tapes that I was putting out a few years ago and I'm like, man, like, Oh, but it's part of it. You just have to. You know what I see? I see a lot of um, of self tapes from friends, from colleagues uh, that seem to start off in a vacuum. Um, and I know that that's one of the things that I really, I really put thought and effort into. It's a simple thing, but making sure your scene doesn't start from nothing. Making sure your scene starts before the camera starts rolling, before before you would have a director there saying action. I walk into probably. 80% of my self tapes because the character is coming from somewhere else and I don't want it to start static. Along with the sides, I actually sent out a mini pitch deck that I had made for the project just to further communicate some of the tone and feeling that I was going for with the project. And I think this was just another way for me to show the actors that I was very serious about the project and it wasn't something that I hadn't put very much thought into. I, the more information, the more artistic communication there is from the director and the producer, the more able I am to do my job. I love that. I love, especially, man, I love getting to look at a pitch deck. I love getting to look at, um, at color references because it, it sets the whole world for me. 
it's like the difference between uh, playing pretend in an empty space and playing pretend with like the walls of the playhouse built around you and you have the, the aprons hanging on the door. Like, you know what world you're stepping into. I gave everyone about a week to send back their self tapes. Some people sent it in that day. Some people trickled in over the week and some people never sent it in at all. But at the end of it, I was able to go through all the submissions, watch the self tapes over and over again, trying to figure out who to pick because I felt really bad. I want to say yes to everybody. I made them go this far, but I could only pick one. And in the end, I just, I narrowed it down to one person for each role. And I sent them like an official request. Will you be in the short film? And they said, yes. I called them on the phone, made sure they didn't have any crazy questions and everything worked out. And because I narrowed it down to one person for each role, I didn't feel a need to do callbacks, but that is an option. Maybe if I had narrowed it down to only three people, then I could do callbacks, have them do another performance and narrow it down to one from there. But in the end, that wasn't necessary. And even for the parts of Olivia and the entity, I ended up not doing self tapes at all because those roles were so different. They didn't have any dialogue. They didn't have a lot of screen time. I felt like I could get all the information I needed from their reel alone. I sent an official request to them. They accepted. And after that, I just, you know, I stayed in touch with them via email. I updated them on how the film's, you know, pre-production was going. And I just hoped that they'd show up on set and work out. That is essentially the casting process that I used on this short film and probably the process that I will go through in the future. If you have any questions that I didn't answer in this video that I am somehow able to answer, please leave a comment down below. I will answer you. Even if I don't know the answer, I'll answer Hey, I don't know. And also while you're here, uh, subscribe because like, wouldn't it be crazy if I made money from YouTube and then I took that money and I put it into like a film and then I put that film on YouTube and then more people watch my YouTube video and then I got more money and then the cycle just like repeated itself. Wouldn't that be crazy? That's just economics 101. So if you like the economy and you like supporting people, feel free to subscribe. Maybe watch another video, maybe share a video, maybe, yeah, maybe watch all my videos. You know, that option exists. I'm not saying you have to, but it's out there and it's free and it's possible. So um, other than that, thanks for watching.